Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome along to the vlog. So, let me just spin around and have a quick look. The time is 6.47. I don't think you can see from way back here. That's 6.47 in the evening. And we've got the pilot kit out because we're gonna start to do the 4-4 can tomorrow and hopefully we'll be able to put the first batch of these cans on the website in September. Uh, it would be nice to have been able to hit the end of August, but with the kitchen reopening and all things as they are, I don't think that was something that was going to happen. So this has obviously been sat for some time. So in here I have a uh, 7 or 10% caustic solution. I can't remember which. And we're giving it a bit of a recirculation through all of the fittings and everything else to make sure that it's all nice and clean and ready to go for tomorrow. You may notice as well some things have changed in this corner. I've moved the sink to one side to give me a little bit more space to put the fermenters on there. Unfortunately, we are still just going to be using these plastic fermenters for now, but money, uh, we don't have the money to buy any conicals. I've installed this little taparoo thing so we can hook up to chill the beer at the end of the day. And you'll notice that here once was an IBC which I used for a cold liquor tank for rinsing the fermenters primarily. So what we've done is we've moved this pallet rack in which uh, some of it was over there above the cask wash and then we moved this section across here so by putting, instead of having three separate pallet racks, we've just got two, if you like, but that meant we had two spare legs. So the spare leg goes on that end, and the spare leg goes on that end, giving us four, which is crazy. You start with three, finish with four, but that's how it works. Basically, we had six legs. So we put the IBC up there, which has meant we get a little bit more head pressure on the inlet, the suction side of the CIP pumps when we're rinsing the tanks because it was just pulling it out at ground level before and we've piped it all the way across you can see a pipe running across up here and then we've teed it there and ran across there so that's given us cold liquor tank supply here and a cold liquor tank supply there which means that we can keep the central part of the brewery clear whilst we're cleaning the tanks so if anybody needs to come down here with a pallet truck and get some beers out of one of the cold rooms they can do so no problem whatsoever so the kitchen's open we're going to be starting the 4-4 can series tomorrow and last week I filled up every single fermenter that we've got. Gemma's just emptied five today. Uh, ding, 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 ding. All full, apart from five. We've got some new brewery hose as well. Brewer's suction and delivery hose. And that means that the old one has now been uh, changed over to be the cleaning hose. And the old cleaning hose, the blue one that we had, bin. But yeah, as I was saying, we brewed all week and we actually made another beer, an amber ale. It's for the website. We're going to put the recipe online and uh, it's going to be available to download for free. Or you can donate a few quid if you like, just like with the others. And that is also going to be available alongside the 4-4 can recipes so we'll all be able to get our teeth stuck into these beers you can buy the cans on the website when they're ready and you can download the recipe to brew it for yourself which i think is fantastic it's a great idea so i'm going to try and film some of the brew day tomorrow but probably not too much of it we'll just do a few like nice laid back vlogs and we'll talk about the recipe i haven't developed the recipe for this yet so that's going to happen tonight when i get in but before i go I'd just like to show you one more thing. Let's go in the kitchen. So here we are, ladies and gents, in the kitchen. Let me just zoom out a little bit for you. 
So Tom's got quite a few covers on today. You all remember Tom, the super head chef? So he's literally in his element at the minute with everything going wild. So I just thought I'd pop in before I disappear home and show you exactly what's going on. I'm trying not to get in his way because unfortunately Tom's on his own in the kitchen because we didn't know how busy it was going to be so we didn't want to bring both of the chefs off furlough but it looks like it's going to happen sooner rather than later the way the way things have gone today and yesterday and are planned for tomorrow so let's get a little bit of a zoom in on some of this food So these are our steak burgers that Tom's just put in together and they're selling at the amazing price of uh, <laughs> customers are paying a fiver. They're paying a fiver for these with the with the eat out to help out scheme. They're about 12 quid aren't they? Something like that normally. So we'll just follow Tom through to the end of this dish and let you see what a working kitchen's really like. So the pass that we made seems to be working flawlessly. It's not electrocuted anybody yet or burnt out. No Oh, and this is for the seafood platter down here. So that's cod loin in our own beer batter and then breaded white bait. And on the grill, we've got king prawns. Another massive dish. Signature. They're away. Well done, mate. It's a bit warm, <laughs> yeah. Right, we'll come back another day and pick this up again, folks. Thanks for joining us. It's good to be back in the kitchen.
Ladybug from down there. I certainly can't. 